how has your investment philosophy changed since you founded DFJ in 85? So um, I actually founded Draper Associates in 85. We brought okay. John Fincher in in 91 and then Jurvetson in in 93. And then we renamed it in 94. Um, gotcha. And then it went back to Draper Associates. I, I spun out and went back to Draper Associates. Um, but, you know, when I first got going, I was knocking on doors of new uh, new development <laughs> projects to see any in any anywhere there was a sign that said something software. And that was how I was finding my investments. So it's changed a lot. We've um, we've gone from that to where um, the venture capital and entrepreneurship have spread around the world, which kind of was my mission in life. I saw what it did for the Silicon Valley uh, secondhand watching as my dad was an investor. And then um, I started to uh, spread the word and that was a, a big part of it. But now there are so many entrepreneurs out there and there, there are so many venture capitalists out there that it's gotten to be very competitive, but it's also allowed creative people from wherever they may be to enter this really extraordinary, exciting market. So uh, I would say it's changed in a in a big way, but the uh, the benefits are still there, <clears throat> and I don't think there's a limit to how great this can be because more and more people can um, can continue to innovate, and it allows all those people. To innovate it used to be way back when it was sort of the silicon valley and a little from route 128 in boston and those were the only people that were starting businesses of any technology businesses mm -hmm. and then it evolved so that silicon valley has has been exported it's everywhere mm -hmm. and now we're moving into another level mm -hmm. where because of the, the internet was the one who really helped us spread this uh, technology and entrepreneurship around the world and venture capital. But now um, Bitcoin and the blockchain and smart contracts are making it so that the, the world economy has a new platform from which to operate. And the geographic borders are starting to fall. And what that means is that we're taking this anthropological leap forward uh, as a human people, uh, very exciting. We, you know, the, the borders were really important for a while. It was like, you don't cross this border, I don't cross this border, and we can both build our families and our communities without fear of invasion on that border. And that was great for a while. Um, but then years, many years later, the internet came and we realized that by communicating across that border, we were both better off. And uh, and having no border was even better. Uh, the European Union started to make it so that there really wasn't any border. Um, and uh, and we both benefit because, like, let's say you create uh, let's say you have a farm and I have a house. If if uh, we don't trade with each other, I die of starvation and then you die of exposure. <laughs> mm -hmm. And if we trade and then multiply that by the eight billion people around the world and all their creativity, they're all helping one another and us uh, and providing us better lives. And we should encourage that. So uh, free trade is so important. Open borders are so important. Um, Bitcoin is so important because it's a, a global uh, frictionless, open, transparent, well-recognized currency very exciting to see yeah, what it, they it, do for the world and and uh down the road we're gonna look 10 years from now we're gonna look back and we're gonna say god remember when when people use currencies that were linked to political forces <laughs> linked to government or military <laughs> group or whatever mm -hmm. or, or countries that would just keep printing currency like venezuela and argentina and nigeria um mm -hmm. Uh, now uh, we've got a new currency 
And once I can use my Bitcoin, I can use it at some places, KFC and other places, but uh, KFC in Canada. Um, uh, once I can use it for pretty much anything I want to buy, I will make the complete transfer uh, and, and move all my fiat to Bitcoin because who's going to want a currency that is um, tied to political forces and subject to inflationary pressures? Mm-hmm. When the government printed trillions of dollars, uh, that made all the dollars that were out there originally worth less. Uh, so why would I hold a currency like that when I can hold one that uh, there are only 21 million of them and, and it's going to be recognized around the world? Mm-hmm.